Hey YouTube, this is Drew here. I thought some of you guys might be interested in seeing how a video game is put together, from the very beginnings of a concept to the fully fleshed out final product. As some of you might know from my previous Tower Offense videos, I'm currently in a video game design class at Texas A&M University. My team is called Revision 119 and we consist of three programmers and one artist. We'll be programming the game in C Sharp using Microsoft's XNA Game Studio. We feel that this uh, environment will allow us to use our skills and creativity to their maximum potential and make the game easiest to distribute. If you like video games but don't know anything about how they're developed, then hopefully you'll find the videos in this series interesting. If you do know about the development cycle, then maybe you can provide some helpful feedback. But of course, we appreciate feedback from everybody, and if you have something to say, please leave your comments. So, when we were deciding on what kind of a game we wanted to make, we tossed around a few ideas, but settled on a fast-paced action game that would have a lot of replayability. If any of you guys are familiar with the Metal Slug series, this is the kind of game we're trying to make. It's a 2D platformer where you run from one side of the level to the other, killing everything in your wake, and it's a blast. Visually, we want the game to resemble the work of Yona Vasquez, which many of you may know from TV shows or comics like Invader Zim or Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. The story behind the game is that, after many years of research, you, a scientist, have developed a revolutionary new machine that will change the world. However, on the eve of its unveiling, the device was torn to pieces and stolen by the excessively vile, insidious laboratory, or evil corporation. The evil corporation plans to use the device to take over the world, of course. Enraged that someone would steal your research, you and some of your fellow researchers have set out to recover this device and annihilate the evil core. So, as of now, a working title is The Fall of Evil Corp. So, on to the design of the game. Because we want to focus on replayability, one of the things that we wanted to feature in this game is procedural content generation. What we want to do is make the game different every time you play it. This means that our content will be created on a per-need basis, and with enough randomness that it feels like you never played the same game twice. The difficulty in this model of game design is determining just how different you want the game to be each run through, and making sure that the game difficulty won't vary too widely between one playthrough and the next. Another thing we want to make use of is particle effects. Things like bullets, explosions, and trails are typically modeled by particle systems. They allow you to model complex physical phenomena with relative ease and accuracy, providing a more fulfilling gaming experience. It sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty simple in theory. The game itself will consist of four modes. The first will be a search and destroy mission where you start on the left end of the level and your only goal is to get to the right end, killing everything in your path. The second will be a sort of base defense mission where you have to fend off enemies that are trying to attack some spot on the map. The third mode will be a boss fight and the fourth will be an escape mission where you have to run away from an explosion fast enough that you don't get devoured by the flames. In our code, we subdivide the level into sections where each section has a logical progression. For example, the first section might be defense, the next might be battlements, then munitions, then finally you get to the headquarters. Each section will contain a set of tiles, which will contain the props that we use. Props can be things like cars, uh, crates, platforms, or maybe towers. Some of them you'll be able to pass through and nothing happens. Others you'll have to jump over because you'll collide with it. You can't just walk through it. And by dividing the levels up into these sections and tiles, we'll be able to have a logical flow and hopefully make levels that make sense and at the same time will be beatable. So, on to what we have so far. As of now, we have 31 different C-sharp classes and a few sprites such as the player, the props, and the, the background uh, that you can see through the, the parallax scrolling. Our game spawns you at the beginning of a search and destroy level and lets you walk around. That's pretty much all you can do at this point. We are currently one week away from our first milestone, and what we currently have is one level with procedurally generated content, which you can see. We also have collision detection and platforms working, player input via the gamepad, and the screen translation that moves with the player as he progresses through the level. What we need to add is the ability to shoot and the ability to spawn enemies that have some rudimentary form of AI. All of the artwork here, except for the walking player, is filler. As our artist creates more content, however, we'll just swap it out for what we already have now. As you can see, the game is relatively simple at this point, as it's just a playable prototype, but we have a solid framework in our code to allow us to add elements as we finish them. Adding an enemy at this point would be as simple as filling out the functions that grab the input from the artificial intelligence and placing that enemy in the level. The particle engine as well is already actually up and running in the game, we just don't have any particle emitters yet. So when we want to make the ability to shoot, we just have to add that bullet emitter that will 
shoot the bullets and you have it in the game. Our game is completely open source and everything that we have can be downloaded at any time from Google Code, uh, to which I'll put a link in the sidebar. You'll need a subversion client like Tortoise SBN to check it out and the visual C Sharp IDE that you can download from Microsoft for free to compile and play the game. You'll also need an Xbox gamepad to plug into your computer. So, if you guys think this is cool, you see any bugs in the game, or think we could improve something, please let us know. I'll see you guys again soon and show you the progress that we've made in our next video. Thanks.